Good morning, everybody. So today bringing here another component to explain the functionality of the application. So this here is the AUX PSUF3 EAP security read mine is one BRL. It is for monitoring security devices. It can monitor category 43. Depends on the connection, how it will be done. There's this model here, 13. AP, it has the screw connectors. The NC is a spring connector and then has the 33, which hence the power up to 220. So first important points to talk about, this relay is multifunction. It can monitor different types of devices. Others, the old Royals of Schneider as well, uh, or relays from other manufacturers. Normally there is each relay for each functionality. So this one here is a relay that in this case has six functions and there are other models that have other complementary functions. So some important points. First is that this relay has the system which is the dynamization function which is in the monitoring outputs. It generates some pulses in a certain period of time with a specific characteristic that is for, for example, at the output S11 which will monitor the relay and enters S12. It gives this pulse in a specific pattern where it will ensure that it is not being cheated. For example, if it was 24 volts, the direct signal was very easy to pick up. Put in about 24 volts directly from a source and then it will say that the emergency is always okay, for example. So this is an 11 ground reason. Dynamization is to guarantee this security. And another feature is the startup test or startup test that consists normally is used for ports. It depends a lot on the application is that when you turn on the relay, it will not arm first. You have to call the emergency or open, close the door to make sure he tests whether the sensor or switch or button contacts are working. So when you turn it on, it won't reset. First, you have to take this test and then it will reset. So here talking about the relay, this relay, it has six functions. I'm going to talk about the six functions and then the eight types of starts and you select. Here you have the two selectors. One is the function and the other is the start type. So the first function is to monitor devices with two in two NF, one in plus one NF without synchronization and with dynamization. The synchronization is the time is each device always has two contacts so it is the time between triggering one contact and another according to the function. There is a specific time that I will spend one by one that will make you understand. But is for example some keys, some end of courses, it has a contact, it activates before or it, for example, if it acts quickly in short, it can activate one after the other. Or if it is two sensors, for example, with the same device that uses a contact of each, it is the time to trigger the two contacts, then in the functions to select is 2 in 2 NF or 1 in 1 and more 1 NF. This exchange should also have changed the relay before. Today it's the same relay for all types of contacts, so it's much easier, right? Then one OS2 function in DNF or NANF without synchronization with dynamization. Function 2, the same contacts, but with synchronization and dynamization, that is, it makes that random pulse to monitor and has a synchronization. How does the synchronization of this function to work? If the S12 has a security input, the 12 and the S22R, where will you monitor the two contacts? If 12 fires before S22, S22 has two seconds to fire. For example, I triggered the 12 and did not trigger the 22. Within two seconds, I have to activate this 22. Otherwise, it will also go into an error alarm in this case, right? What if I fire the S22 first? You have four seconds to activate S12. I know it sounds kind of weird, but there are applications that need this synchronization in this period. So function three is the same contacts, but with synchronization, without dynamization, and the synchronization between the contacts has to be less than half a second. So it doesn't matter if triggered the first S12, 
S22 is half a second first. It can be used even for a manual bike control, it has a specific relay for this. However, depending on some application, it is not the specific relay to control the bi manual. But if you have any application that has some similar drive, it can be used. Function 4. There are two PNP sensors without synchronization and without dynamization. That is, the PNP sensor, you will get the signal from it. It will come in 24 volts. The negative of this sensor, you have to connect to the terminal. To terminal B2, I have the electrical diagram here, which is the reference signal, because the signal will not come out. For example, in the key exits S11 and enters S12. As the PNP has the source of the sensor itself, it will only send direct to the S12. S11 uh, verse 21 are empty, so you have to put a reference just like any process sensor. So the reference goes to B2. And function 5 is also for two sensors, but with synchronization, which has half a second between the two inputs. And function 6 is more for safety curtains, where it has solid state outputs. Function 6 is for two solid state inputs, or SSD without synchronization and without dynamization for the inputs. For functions 45 and 6, which are those that have the external source. You have to reference the negative in B2. So the three functions are these. Let's go to the startup startup. There are three types of startup. And then there is the test startup and the dynamization. So function one, start one, in this case is manual or automatic. It will depend later. Here I will show you how the connection is, whether it is manual or whether it is automatic. No startup test and with dynamization. The dynamism is the same as the other. The security contract in this case will select the dynamization in the function and then in the start there is also dynamization and the second option is manual automatic with startup. Third start is a monitored start without startup. Coadnamization test. The monitored start, the inputs must be activated for a period greater than 80 milliseconds. So it is as if it were automatic but it has this period of time that has to be 2. The safety inputs triggered at 4 is the monitored start also as test startup with dynamization 5. Manual automatic without startup test without dynamization 6. Manual automatic with startup test without dynamization 7. Startup monitored without startup, test without dynamization, and 8. Start monitored with startup test without dynamization, then capitulating, the automatic manual is most applications. The manual is when it has the reset button and automatic without a button, for example, on a light curtain, on a press, and the operator will keep feeding it. He's usually this curtain. It is made with automatic reset so that the guy puts his hand there, he has to reset, puts his hand there, he has to reset. So the reset button is normally for a door, for an emergency. In short, these devices that are in operation that will have direct contact, normally the automatic reset so as not to delay the process. And then there is the monitored start, which is it will wait for this period of 80 milliseconds to set up the contacts. And there is two. A status output in which is AZ1, I will pass. Then here the link, I will put these descriptions of the functions on the screen. I will also put it in the description of the video. Okay, the Bone Z Relay 1, it is a 10 position post trainer output where it will give the status of the do, the relay, what is happening at the exact moment. Uh, here in the description of the video, I will leave the complete manual where it has the table and says what is it, what are these pus, what is each training situation and pus. Then if you make an interpretation table in the PLC, you can make a communication from a relay, so simple, but communicating, giving real-time status of his status. So bringing here an example of connection, I'm going to connect the bench here. Yes, I have the relay link here to put it on the screen now, then I'll go post by post. But my application here is an emergency button with two closed contacts and a reset button. What did I do? It's on terminal 1 and 2, power to a 24 to 2 negative or 0, 
Finally, S11. First control signal comes out of S11. Go to the emergency button. Leave the button of a contact of the emergency button. Leave the contact, come back on this 12, that's it. That's what we'll monitor if the emergency is activated. Y1 is the exit for start, so exit Y1. You can go from there. There's a series here, right? You can go here to the DR7 button, which is an open contact. Leave the DR7 button, pass to the contact of the first safety contactor. Then it leaves the first contactor, passes to the second, it is in the NF of the contactor that what will happen, it will not go, and then it returns to issue 2, which is the reset. What happens to the contactor when it hits, it will open these contacts that have represented here as KS or KS2. If an emergency hits, the contactors will open normally, right? If one of them has a glued account. The contact will not open here, that is, it will stay normally open and will not allow me to restart next time. That's why safety contactors have to have mirror contact, okay? There are people who even do it, but this is the explanation of the reason for having the auxiliary contact with the mirror of the power contacts. Following on the side, 1323-33 are the contacts in the relay. Then Ali will feed right here. In this case I put 24 volts because it's a simulation but it can go to 220 as well. An important note, safety contactors can be coil, 220 is no problem. The standard requires that the devices that will have contact with the operator be in low voltage. That is, looking here on the bench, these are these devices. It's the emergency setting, setting 7 traffic lights, LEDs, anyway, gauntlet. What the end of travel, what has contact with the operator within the panel can have, can be yes scroll to 220, because it has no logic. Oh, the contactor has to be 24 volts for safety, and then on the side of the contactor has a power supply, and 220 has one from an author. 220 so is what has in contact with the operator. Below has extra low voltage, if I'm not mistaken, up to 60 volts continuous. Uh, moving to the bottom line of the terminals is board B2, which is the reference. Since I used an emergency button, I don't need to turn anything on it because the control signal itself comes from it. It leaves the Bourne S21, goes to the second emergency NF contact, leaves the second contact, goes to the S22 down monitoring Z1 is the status output. As here, everything electromechanical even has ACLP, but it's for a next video that I'm going to do. It is not being used. And 14 and 2434 are the safety outputs. So KSA, KS2 can see that it is there on 2434, which are would be those two contactors in series with the power EK30. What did I do here? I pass OK30 is the relay. The slim relay has the slim relay here on the side. I don't know if you can see that what happens as the contacts are all on. I like to signal the reset button signal when you have to press it, that is simulating here I changed the function. Here I was in the function in start 2, which he needs to trigger and release to create the test startup. So now I've moved on to 1, I'm going to reset it, oops. I let it go. Is it okay now? The exits are activated. What happens now? I have an output that is firing an LED indicating it's okay. Like it's a 24 or 34. When I and its OLED here from the reset is off. When I hit emergency, I turn on the signal light OLED. But I have to have an NF3 contact because when I hit emergency, the safety LED contacts will fall. So I need the NF to signal, so I put it in an NF that would be here, OK30 of the scheme to signal here. This emergency button is a button on the XB5 line that has 11 traffic lights on it, right? Which makes it much easier in applications that have more than one emergency button to know which button to press. So when you squeeze it turns red, release it, it turns white, I reset it here. Okay, now I'm going to take advantage of the fact that there was that function 2. 
I'm going to show the startup test. I went to function 2, energize I, don't leave where you are. If it was a door or something. Oh, come here, press it. I open the door. In case I close the door, now it allowed me, I reboot. What is it? Why is this initial test good? If my emergency button contact is stuck, damaged, or the key has a locked contact, the moment I press here and have a locked contact, it will only open one contact. The other will remain closed. Rene will go in alarm and won't let it. I, I restart, oh, pressing reset won't let me energize the security system because it's the button. Is this device defective? So it's a very interesting test. I like to get him ready to do this initial validation. Of course, in devices, if it is 11 machines that have several doors, several trallas, it is half feasible to leave opening one by one having all the emergencies. But when it is a machine, a smaller device that is most applications, this test is very valid. So some points about the relay that are interesting. I commented and it has one more very good point. Oh, there is no screwdriver here and it is the removable terminal blocks. When you need to do relay maintenance, let me, I'll even get one. I'm going to get a screwdriver so I don't do it. For example, there's a defect in the relay, okay? I'm going to need to replace it. You know, in the previous ones, I would have to release one by one here and make all this wiring come loose at once. This one has a removable terminal block, so I just came here, release it, release the four, right? Change the relay, put the terminals in, it works. So that's it, guys. Thanks for your attention. I hope it helps many, many, many people with this video out there because there are many people who have doubts about how to make the connection and how these relay selectors work. Thank you. See you next time.